want to give you this message today, and I'm thankful the Lord gave me this to you, and I was, I was asking God, please, what do you give to our people, give to our mothers today for encouragement and everyone encouragement this morning? And with circumstances the way they were, you never know, and I was telling someone this morning, how many know you never know the sequence of things that's going to happen to you? The Lord knows the sequence of things that are happening that will happen. He knew what would happen in my life. He knew that there were going to be a time last week that I would bury my mother and eulogize her. And he knew that after that would be Mother's Day the next week. And I'm thankful today that the Lord's given me strength today to do this and to encourage you because I know you're praying for me. And I thank God that I can encourage you in knowing that every one of you, you mothers in this house, is very precious in the sight of God. So today we celebrate Mother's Day as a sanction in the Bible because of our Bible, it says in Exodus 20 and 12, he says, Honor thy father and mother, that, thy may, thy day, that my days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You know, Christian mothers in which there are some here in this house are the world's greatest asset. And the great human influence upon our society come from our mothers. And as we know, the, the first mother of the Bible brought havoc and great trouble to the human race. But in the grace of the Lord, the Lord came to help, to the help of a condemned motherhood. At Calvary, the Son of God and the Son of a mother, he took upon himself the curse pronounced upon a woman and made it possible to have a holy motherhood. Then the Lord, the Lord uses mothers to develop the soul life of her children. You know, that child that lies upon their mother's chest is something that will never cease to exist. It will live on the bliss or the torment forever and ever. You know, Christian's mothers should be highly honored for they are kingdom builders, character constructors, and recruiting agents for the eternal returns and realms that lie beyond this present life. And as we witness Mother's Day, it is a special time when we can express our gratitude to the one who gave us birth, who cared for us when we could not care for ourselves. She gave us cheer when we succeeded and consolation and comfort when we failed. My mother, Stella May, Stella May McIntosh, did that for me. I dedicate this to her and to you all mothers, young and old in this house. I dedicate this to you. Today's theme that I want to give to you is a mother who was a wise investor. We're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 28. I'm going to read verses 24 through 28. And it read as follows. <clears throat> now when she had weaned him, she took up with her with three bulls, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I pray to you, the Lord. For this child I pray, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. So they worship the Lord there. 
Father, we thank you and love you for this day that you made. We give you honor and praise and glory for this wonderful Mother's Day. I pray for all of our mothers. I pray for mothers everywhere. That's Christian, Christian mothers. I pray that you give us your strength and mercy, Lord, as I preach this message. Give me strength, Father. I thank you, Father, for my mother who's in heaven today, who went to go see you, and who are there with you now. And I thank you, Father, for the impact that she put on me. All of our mothers have impacted their children, Father, and I pray that you will still be an impact to those who are, who are before me this morning. I give you honor and praise. Lord, I don't preach in my own strength, but I preach in yours. And I thank you, Father, because you are so good. You're such a miracle working God, and we give you thanks and praise. Amen. We're going to talk about this morning a mother who was a wise investor. You know, the people who place their money in stocks, and today I'm talking about a woman who was a wise investor. You know, the people who put their money in stocks do so with the hope and intention that the stocks in their portfolios will do well and that it will make a profit. But of course, it doesn't always turn out that way. You know, sometimes the stocks don't do well and the investor loses some of all their money. Some or all their money. Now, I may not be a full-fledged investor in stocks like some people are, but I'm still an active investor in many areas of my life. Every action, every attitude, every activity is an investment in something, and it will reap dividends either to the glory of God or to the glory of the flesh. Now, in the stock market, a wise investor will study stocks because they invest in things that they can maximize the return potential and the money they invest. Those who would make a wise investment of their lives do the same. People who are wise investors of life examine all the various areas of their lives so they be sure that they, be, that they will receive the greatest dividend for their investment. And this passage presents us to a woman by the name of Hannah. And we're going to go through this together as we go through this scripture we're going to talk about a woman named Hannah, a mother. She's presented as a woman who was a shrewd investor of life, of her life. And she made some very wise investments that continue to reap dividends down to this very day. And I would like for us to take a look at, to see at Hannah's portfolio this morning. I want to point the areas where she made wise investments. And I want to encourage you to make the very same investments in the life, in your life like Hannah did. Let's examine these wise investments here for this great mother, a woman of faith, while I preach on the thoughts of Hannah, a wise investor. First of all, she made a wise investment in the family. Now, if you know about Hannah, you'll know about what she went through and what we're going to go through today which we encourage you mothers and encourage everyone today. Hannah invested her life in her family in spite of the fact that the circumstances weren't as pleasant as they should have been at her home. Yet she persevered to make her investment in the family she loved. And first of all, she invested in the spite of difficulty. Let me read verses 1 and 2 of chapter 1 of 1 Samuel. It said, now there was a certain man, <clears throat> excuse me here, <clears throat> there was a certain man in Ramathan Zophian of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jer Jerome, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, in the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. So right off the bat, we learn that Hannah was married to a man with two wives. This is a recipe for disaster. 
Yet Hannah was not looking for the exit. She stayed in the family and she worked to make the best of a bad situation. But God, God never said the family would be easy to live in. How many know that family is not an easy place to live? Families are great and they are wonderful, but every one of them is filled with people and in them lies the potential for trouble. There will be disagreements and, and, and there will be uh, trouble, but, but the secret lies in not running away. If you're watching and listening today, learn to make an investment in your family regardless of the difficulties you face in life. And you know there's some difficulties that are tragic that can't be, that can't be solved. But it is gotten too easy to walk away in our society. The Lord's people need to learn the truth that marriage and family is a lifetime investment. How many know that this morning? And if you're watching this morning on mygladtidings.org or if you're streaming this message, this message goes to you also too. And then we see the invested, we see she invested in spite of discouragement. Verses 4 through 6 says, And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Benina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But Hannah would be, would give a, be given a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Her husband's other wife, Penina, had children. But Hannah was barren. Penina used Hannah's barrenness as a means of ridicule. She mocked Hannah and made her life miserable. And it seems to me that I, I detect a hint of jealousy at this home. It tells that Elkanah loves Hannah. Apparently, she was his favorite and he showed. And Penina, however, could give Elkanah something that Hannah could not, namely children. And in those days, when you were barren, they thought you were worthless. And she used it as a leverage in the household to mock Hannah. All this criticism and belittling made life practically impossible for Hannah. Yet she continued to invest in the family, and what a testimony. Family is like that sometimes, of course, you know. And I know that no one here is involved in a polygamous relationship. Y yes. Amen. Amen. But I can say that in our world and even in our own country, there are some. But I'm referring to the discouragement that crops up from time to time in the home. Husbands and wives and children are all feel that they are unappreciated, taken for granted, and a target of constant criticism sometimes. Sometimes people get discouraged at their fellow family members and what they say and do. But discouragement is no reason to close the door on the family. Who knows that today? No. You continue to invest in your life in the people you love, knowing that in due course you will reap a harvest for the glory of God. And for someone who is listening today, who, who may be defeated, uh, who may feel defeated or be discouraged, I want you to know this today with the way things are going and in your, and, 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 and your family, but let me encourage you with something here. Keep investing. You may never see the results you want, but there is a biblical principle that speaks to your need today. Galatians 6, 7, and 9 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will not also reap. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And when we sow the right things... We will reap the right harvest. Keep investing in people's lives with especially prayer and living godly lives and leave the harvest to the hand of God. 
because he will never fail. Just a couple of sermons ago, I, I spoke about the gospel seed. You may not see the results in people's lives that week or, or that year or even in your lifetime, but keep on showing up front the gospel seed. Not just your words of your testimony, but by your living example of living faith. And then we also, we see that she invested in spite of her desperation. Verses 5 and 6 read like this. It says, But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Anna, although the Lord had closed her womb, and her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Both these verses tell us that Hannah was barren because God had chosen this lot for her. I want you to get this now. She was in a situation that was of the Lord's doing. And nothing she could do would ever change it. What Hannah had not known, what Hannah did not know was that God's plans for her were good plans. His plans wasn't to hurt her. His plan was to amaze her in her time. And listen, the plans of God for us are good plans. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Romans 8 and 28 says this, Thank you, Jesus. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So if you're watching today, it may appear that investments you make in your family are not paying off at the present time. It may look like your spouse and your children are all you planned and prayed and hoped they would be. If that is the case, let me encourage you to keep on investing. And I mean especially investing in prayer and in your life example. The closing bell hasn't rung yet, folks. Your family is too important for you to, to, for you to stop investing yourself in them now. It may seem like you do all the giving and you, and you receive, <laughs> you receive none of the getting. Anybody ever felt like that before? But for those who make wise investments in their families, their dividends come at unexpected times in a marvelous ways. I'm just trying to encourage you to keep on investing. And I can say that Stella McIntosh invested in our family until the day she left this earth to glory. And when we see that Hannah made a wise investment in her faith, it appears that the family was important to Hannah, but it also appears that her faith was very important to her as well. She made a wise investment in the faith. Her faith was personal. Let me read verses 10 and 11. It says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the afflictions of your maidservant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. Hannah may have been taking the Nazarite vow for him to be set apart for the Lord's service. Because she wanted to dedicate him to the Lord. And if you read further in her life, you can see that in chapters 2 and 1 and 2, you can see that in her praise. But in the verses we just read, we see a woman, we see a woman who knows the Lord on a personal level. Her prayer, her praise later on showed that she had a personal relationship with the sovereign and almighty God. She was a believer and she was openly active in the practice of her faith. 
Do you know? Do you know the greatest gift you can give your family? The knowledge that you are saved. That's the greatest gift you can give your family. The knowledge that you are saved with a firm relationship with our Lord. The greatest single investment you can make in your life is that of investing in a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. My mother always lived that to a T in front of her family. Not just a casual brushing up against the things of God, but a real and vital relationship with him that controls the way you live your life every single day. In other words, you need to be sure that you are saved by grace and headed to heaven. Nothing in time and eternity is as important as your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Be sure you make that investment. And then we see Hannah's faith was real, and it was every day. Verses 10 through 18 says this, and go along with me. It says, and she was in bitterness of her soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink. But I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel shall grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went away and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Here we see her prayer and her dialogue with Eli. Hannah was a woman who, was, who, who possessed a practical faith in God. She didn't just know about him. She knew him, and she trusted him for all her needs. She leaned upon him and trusted him for the impossible in her life. How many know we can trust God for the impossible? Come on, how many know we can trust him for the impossible? Yes. And she didn't just talk about faith in God. She fleshed it out by the way she lived. Again, Hannah sets the standard that we should strive to meet today. Not only should we possess a testimony concerning our faith, but we must live out that testimony day by day as we go through our days in life. You know what? In my mama's eulogy, in her celebration service, my thing for her was that she held on to God's unchanging hand. Hannah did this. She held on to the Lord's unchanging hand. Hannah did this. I expressed that she had a, and this is my mother, she had a sweet, dogmatic faith that all her family and the people who knew her always felt. Nothing makes an investment in the lives of others around us like a genuine life lived for the glory of God. A real, everyday, practical faith is a proclaiming faith and always points to others to Jesus Christ. Make an investment in a faith that you can live out day by day. And we see that her faith was deep and intense. It was. 
Verse 11 again says, and I want you to get this. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you'll indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me, and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. In verses 20 through 23 it says, So it came to pass, the process of time, that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Now the man Alcana and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, Not until the child is weaned, then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. So Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. You know what? More than anything, the world, Hannah waited, more than anything in the world, Hannah waited and wanted a child. She wanted to give that gift to her husband and she wanted to experience the fulfillment of motherhood. She knew this was impossible without the work of the Lord. So she believed God for the impossible. That's that word again. She believed the Lord for the impossible and promised God, that, uh, God, promised God the incredible in the return. She asked God for her son and she promised to give that son back to the Lord for his glory. And I'm glad my mother dedicated me back to God when I was born. She did that. Hannah's faith was no superficial faith. She had a deepness of faith that is rare in this world. We have that in the mothers of this church, younger and older. I can see that. What a blessing it is when we come to a place as investors in the faith where we can believe God for the impossible situations in our lives and willingly give everything to him for his glory. That's the kind of faith that the Lord is looking for. He wants to look to develop us in you and me, and that is the kind of faith God can use for his glory. Do you have it today? This kind of faith is always honored by the Lord. Again, in verses 19 and 20, it says, Then they rose early that morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And now came a new Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived their born son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. And then we see Hannah made a wise investment in the future through the lift and the commitment of her. Hannah made the ultimate commitment a mother can make. She totally gave a child to her Lord, to the Lord. She held nothing back. She committed him to the Lord before, before even he was conceived. She dedicated him to the Lord when he was born, and she gave him to the Lord when he was weaned. Here was not a momentary commitment. It was a once and for all commitment from which she never looked back. She sold seed that would re be ripped for generations upon generations. She made an investment in the future. Now imagine how hard it must have been to leave Samuel at the tabernacle. Imagine how she must have anticipated those yearly trips to see him. Imagine her heartbreak as she left each year. But imagine her elation as she watched him develop into a man of God. She was seeing her investment pay off. 
it had been worth the sacrifice. This is the kind of commitment God is seeking in his people. He wants us to invest in the totality of our lives on his altar. He wants us to give all we have and are to him without holding back anything from him. He wants a once and for all commitment for his glory. And if you're watching and listening today, thank you, Jesus. Either by streaming or on my, my blacktidings.org. Some of you have children that need to be placed on the altar this morning. How long has it been since you, with a broken heart, came before the Lord and agonized before him for the souls of your wayward children? Maybe they're out there totally today because of inconsistencies they witness in your life. Maybe they're out there because they rejected the faith you exhibited. Regardless of why they are out there, thank you, God, they need someone praying for them. We need some moms and dads who will get broken over their children and bring them to the Lord's altar and trust him to touch them, whether they're younger or older. And then we see Hannah through the life of her child. Let me read verses 24 through 28. Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. For this child I pray, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. And then we can see some great results in 1 Samuel 2 and 26. And the child grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and men. Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord and he by the grace of God became a mighty man of God. He set a standard of righteousness for the nation of Israel. He was a man greatly used of the Lord. He was the man who anointed the David as king. He was the man who served as the spiritual leader of Israel for many years. He was the man who was, who, who was because of his investment of his mother, made his life before he was born. And during all those early years, he made his life. She prayed that his life would be fruitful and is fruitful up to this very point as we are sitting here. Because she made this kind of investment she did, an entire nation was blessed for many years. In fact, Hannah's investment in Samuel continues to reap dividends to this day. Anytime anyone's helped, anytime anyone's fed, challenged, or blessed through the story of his life, we are feeling the dividends of her investment. Hannah's investment in Samuel continued to live long after she was dead. Those are the kind of dividends we should all want to reap. And as Christian parents, some of you have already and still making that same investment for the future today. You brought them to church when it wasn't easy or convenient. You have and are instilling in them the idea that God's house is an important place to be. You have taught them and you're still teaching them, even if they are grown. You're still teaching them that right and wrong do matter. You're teaching them about Jesus Christ. You're teaching them the important lessons of life. They are learning lessons from watching your faith. You may think, let me tell you this. 
You may think they are seeing much from you. You may think they aren't getting a message. But one day you will see that investment pay off in glorious dividends in the lives of your children. Mothers, mamas, your prayers, your investing all these years are paying off. Keep on investing and remain faithful to the Lord and he will bless your efforts for the glory of God. Keep investing that prayer, an example of righteous living. Keep planting the seed. And let him perform the miracle. We cannot say, we cannot do what God can do. We plant the seed, we keep investing. But we let the Lord perform the miracle. As I end today, if you're watching and listening today, let's get honest for a few minutes here. I know that Hannah made the right investments in her family, in her faith, and in the future. She showed a life of faith that is a cut above the ordinary. However, what she did is a challenge to you and me today. Let me ask you something. What kind of investments are you making in your lives of those around you? Whether they are young or old, especially children, whether you know it or not, you are investing every day you live. What, a kind, of, what kind of dividends will, you, will those investments pay out in return? Thank you, God. I'm... Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad and thankful my mama, Stella McIntosh, invested in me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank you. You know, the good thing about spiritual investments is this. If you've been investing in the wrong things, God will allow you to change the way you are distributed today. He's that type of God. If you see areas that need attention, the person you need to talk to today is the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you may be listening today or some here today may have children you need to bring to the altar. Some have parents and other family members that need the Lord. Why not come and make an investment in them when we pray today? We're going to pray today, folks. Others who have been watching and listening today literally have been foolish with your lives. Thank you, Jesus. Still others have no relationship with the Lord. If you're watching and listening today, I'm talking to you today. I invite you to come to him in your hearts today and start an eternal relationship with him. If he has spoken to your heart, why don't you heed the call of salvation? This morning, make the choice for Jesus as I talk to you today. Because he can make the difference in your life. And if you're in this house, if he made a difference in your life, raise those hands with me. He has. Yeah. Hannah was a wise investor, are you? So why don't you meet him now? Because you don't want to meet him later. If you're watching and listening, and if you're in this house, bow your heads with me. I want to pray. There may be unsaved mothers that may be watching today. 
give your life to Jesus for your children. Others who may not know Jesus today, it's time to give your life over to God. Make the decision to follow Jesus today. And if you decide to give your life to Jesus, I want you to pray with me today. Say this with me, everyone. Dear Jesus, dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you. I need you in my life. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Come into my soul. I've been unrighteous, Lord. I need you to make me right. Thank you, Lord, for this time in my life that I can come to you and I have this chance to invite you in my heart and I ask you to come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me of my sins and my shame. I thank you, Father, that you died on the cross and you rose again the third day. And I believe you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And I thank you for the victory you gave me on the third day when you rose again from the dead. And I believe now, Father, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you've forgiven me of my sins. And I thank you, Father, that now I know, now I know I am saved. I will love you, Father. I will keep you in my heart for the rest of my life until I see you in heaven. And I thank you, Father. Now, Lord, I know that I am saved. And I give you praise. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Give God a hand praise today. Hallelujah.